Sephora japonica is the Japanese pagoda tree. This is a really great tree as far as kind of urban conditions because it tolerates a lot of different situations, a lot of different kind of soils, air pollution. It's not huge, but it's not a really small tree either. Um, your literature says that it can get to 80 feet high. I think you're going to look at more like 60 in uh, maybe 50 in, in the central Oklahoma area. This plant has a, uh, a pinnately compound leaf, so you see the ratios here, and you see the leaflets coming off it. Um, there is no real terminal bud because the stem gets to a particular point, and then it produces a flower structure, and then the the fruit. So you don't have a dormant terminal bud at the end of the stem. The stems are one of the best identification characteristics on this because the stems themselves, and this, this particular image doesn't do it justice, although um, this one does pretty much, um, sort of a deep green, sort of fading to kind of a khaki green for the first uh, up to four years. So you'll have a really long stem at the end that has a lot of green. It hasn't turned to brown like a lot of the uh, a lot of plants will have a green stem the first year and then the second year it's already brown uh, brown or gray. This holds on to the green character for several years. And then the stems will have these little white lenticels which are just gas exchange um, uh, openings but they're sometimes you know, lenticels have a contrasting color and these do. The bark is just kind of a shaggy bark, um, kind of a, a grayish bark. It's not real um, highly textured. It's not real deep furrows or anything, but consistently just sort of a scaly, sort of uh, shaggy type bark. The, the flowers themselves are, are terminal. They're on the, on the end, the terminal end of the branch. Um, a, a pea type flower. Um, on these in, in white. They're actually pretty showy. Um, they occur late June into July and then are followed. They're, they're monoecious. Uh, it's a perfect flower so all the flowers will produce fruit and um, they produce these pods. This, this is in sort of the stage in between flowering and fruit where the fruit's just developing. But once the fruit develops um, the pod constricts around the seeds. So you have these little pods that look like almost like uh, strands of beads and they're on the uh, on the terminal end as well. They stay green uh, throughout the winter so they don't mature to a darker brown color. They stay green and then when they really get to be kind of older um, they'll go just more uh, a yellowish green like, like in this photograph.